Good morning, guys. I just came up with a little tutorial that I wanted to share really quickly. Hopefully, this will be something that useful, something that you can use that will be useful to you. Uh, in the past, in uh, Canvas, the support community, there's been a demand for the ability to color code modules and module element titles. Uh, you can add a lot of things to the module itself or to the elements themselves, like assignments or pages. Of course, those are just HTML pages that you can edit really easily. However, if you want to add that to the modules list, uh, you really can't do anything. The text is black, the background is white or gray, and that's all that you have available. So today, we're going to look at a way that we can color code and change and modify the text in our module titles, in our title element titles. And uh, we're going to see how we can do that without using maybe the standard tools that you would expect. So let's go ahead and look at the desktop. Right now I'm in my instructional design sandbox. And I'm going to go ahead and go to modules. And as you'll see, I've already modified several of the titles uh, up here. I have done several different things that are very convenient and uh, not expected. You are not supposed to. In fact, Canvas, if you ask the instructor support community, they will tell you Canvas will never add the ability to add color or backgrounds or anything like that to these titles because for some reason it wouldn't be inclusive, that uh, it's discriminatory against people who have color perception problems. The problem with that is that's like saying that text is discriminatory against people who have vision problems or that sound is discriminatory against people who have uh, hearing problems. That's just ridiculous. Uh, I'm of the opinion that you should use every sort of resource available and every type of means uh, available in order to communicate information to your students. Uh, saying we're not going to use this or we're not going to support this because it doesn't support 100% of students is ridiculous. Uh, but there again, that's not my battle. My battle is just to show you how to do a workaround. If you want to color code assignments, uh, pages, module titles, if you want to add color to those so that you can make like all reading assignments are red, all review assignments are green, there are hundreds of different colors you have to pick. You can change the title of the, you can change the color of the text. You can change the little black, uh, background of the text, either one. You can add icons and you can add uh, mathematical equations if you want to. You can modify the text inside these assignments. However, what you can't do is what you'd expect, and that's to use HTML in order to modify them. HTML will not work in the little boxes that are provided. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and copy some of this information out of here. And uh, mainly I'm copying and pasting because I don't want to have to take the time to type it all. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new, uh, let's add a page. I'm going to add a page. I'm going to make it a new page. And I'm not going to indent it, but I am going to change the title up. So first of all, I want the, let's see, I want the color to be white. I'm going to leave the color white. Uh, I'm going to make this, oh, uh, what's a good color? Uh, I wonder if maroon works. A-R-O-O-N, is that how you spell maroon? I think we probably better check, because that's one thing you do have to do is spell it correctly. A-R-R-O-O-N. M-A-R-O-O-N. Okay, hey, I did spell it right. Yay me. All right, so M-A-R-O-O-N. Change that. Everything else stays the same. And I'm going to make this example page four. Well, let's make it five, since I already have a four. All right, example page five. Now, if I do that... Sure enough, I've got maroon background, I've got white color, and uh, I've got uh, a potentially a way to color code. Like I said, there are hundreds and hundreds of available colors. And if you really want to get specific, you can also use hexadecimal colors or RGB colors. Uh, I don't really want to get that specific because, like I said, there are hundreds of colors available. And so what I'm going to do is just use the ones that are, that are set up as words. So maroon, lime, magenta, red, blue, green, purple, uh, there are lots of them. 
you can you can just add them in. Let's go ahead and look at the text really quickly. Uh, let's look at the, the the syntax of what I just did. Essentially, what this is this is a markup language. Now you're familiar already, or you should be, with HTML. Hypertext markup language is the coding language of the internet. It's what allows you to build uh, hyperlinks. It's what allows you to format your text uh, within reason. Most formatting is done in HTML nowadays with cascading style sheets, but that's another that's another lesson that we'll probably get into pretty quickly. But the main thing is you can format text, you can change text, you can modify the way that text is presented using HTML, except where the designers of the application, in this case in Structure and Canvas, don't want you to do that. They don't want you to be able to add colors to these backgrounds because some weird inclusivity thing that I don't understand. But what I do understand is that uh, LaTeX, the language, markup language that I'm using here, doesn't require that. It's strictly client side. The browser is what controls it in all major uh, browsers, modern browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari will support uh, LaTeX. And so if you use LaTeX scripting, you'll be able to see it in modern browsers. Yeah, something like Internet Explorer, Opera, probably not. But uh, not many people use those anyway. Remember, you're firing, your, <laughs> you're firing your guns at the largest target here. So that's the people that are using Chrome, Firefox, and Safari probably are, are going to be the biggest market share there. So, uh, But regardless, let's go ahead and look at the syntax really quickly. I'm just going to open this page. This will work in any HTML page that's viewable in a, in a web in a web browser. I'm going to go ahead and open this one and I'm going to put it into the page itself so that we can look at the syntax. So let's go ahead and edit it and we need to go into the code editor. So let's go, if you don't know, it's these two little brackets down here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just paste that same code that I had in there and we'll, we'll look at it. All right, first of all, just like, let's turn that off for a second. Just like with HTML, you have to have an opening and a closing tag to designate that you're about to do something in code. So slash and then a open parenthesis, a backslash and a close parenthesis, these are your opening and closing tags. That means that the browser will interpret everything between those two tags as latex code. Just like it does with uh, HTML code, if you start off with, uh, let's say, angle brackets here, and I'm going to do an HTML tag. This is a title. And I'm going to close that up. Now, if I save this, you'll know what this text is going to get very big, right? So if when I save this, that's going to make that piece of text really big. Semi-big, anyway. Bigger than what it would be if I just typed it in. So that's how HTML works. Essentially, you've got an opening tag and a closing tag, and then everything in between is interpreted as title one or heading one. Well, same thing happens here. Opening tag and a closing tag, everything in between is determined to be or interpreted as latex code. All right, so let's look at the code itself now. We use modifiers, and we use parameters for the modifier. This first modifier, slash color, tells our... Uh, little phrase here, what color the text should be. In this case, it's white. So I say slash color, and then inside these curly brackets, I put the word white. And that lets me uh, set the color that I want that particular, all the text between that bracket, or that uh, tag, and this tag, all the text between those, until I tell it something else, is going to be white. Uh, let's change that just so we can say we changed something. Let's go and make that yellow. And it really doesn't matter if you use capitals or not, but I prefer to in this case. All right, so we've modified our text. Slash color, and then in brackets we have yellow. The text should be yellow. Our next modification is going to be to the background behind the text. So we're going to say color box. And uh, we do slash color box. This is the box of color around the text. And I'm going to change this to gray. And I think it's G-R-E-Y as opposed to A-Y. We'll see. All right. So once again, we've got our parameter. We've got our modifier. Our, pardon me, our modifier and then our parameter. 
And then the text that we want to modify is also inside angle brackets. So this example page three, put a space in there. And I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, this text is going to be what is yellow with a gray box behind it. So anything in, remember, anything between the two tags is going to get modified or interpreted as latex. Color of the text, color of the background, the text that's being modified. If we save that, unless I made a mistake typing, what we should see is a gray box with yellow text that says example page. And sure enough, a gray box, yellow text, it says example page. This can go anywhere that you can save text. Uh, you can do this sort of formatting uh, anywhere you want to. Now, another interesting thing, you can't right-click and copy like you would expect. Uh, you know, like this text here, I can copy that. If you don't want your text to be copied for an answer or an answer or, or, a, or some piece that you don't want people to copy and paste, all you have to do is put it in those tags and then what will happen is it will show up as uh, MathJax, which is the application that LaTeX comes in and as far as Chrome is concerned. So I wonder what happened. Never mind. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Anyway, so it also makes the text unselectable. You can't select it. You can't copy it, which is interesting if you have... Uh, if you have something that you don't particularly want copied and pasted somewhere else. But once again, you can add decorations, you can add color to your, basically to any text. You can, as long as you put it in those tags, you can, uh, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, if you're a math teacher, this is something that's really important. Latex was designed to format mathematical expressions. So let's go look at a mathematical expression. Let's look at... Uh, if you look at this, you can probably tell there's our opening tag. Oops, pardon me. Opening tag, closing tag. And inside there, you're going to see slash squirt. You can probably tell that that means square root. And then what's going to be modified is this x to the power of 2 plus 1. So what this should say is the square root of x to the power of 2 plus 1. Now, that's fairly simple. This would be easy to do in HTML. So let's go ahead and paste it in. Remember, you need to be in the code editor for this. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that. And when I save it, I should see a fairly nicely formatted x square root of 2 plus 1. And look at that. Sure enough, it is. Also, you can't copy and paste that. But um, now this, is, this, this would be fairly easy to do in HTML. But getting the square root symbol in there and then getting this under it, not so much. So if you are a math teacher and you need to put mathematical expressions inside your text, oh, this is the way to go. Uh, let me recommend you go over here and visit this page. And it's an application called Overleaf. It will let you build things. In, uh, it will let you build mathematical expressions and then put them into HTML. It's fairly simple just to copy and paste. So uh, for mathematical teachers, this is a blessing in disguise, especially when you have complicated, like say that was 1 over 1 over 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 to the power of e all over 1 or over 2 or whatever. You can really get complicated in your mathematical expressions. You can do differential equations and limits. You can do derivatives and integrals and things like that. It's easy to format those and type them into text where they look nice and where they fit and where uh, you can do all sorts of things with them. Uh, this also works really well if you're using uh, Excel spreadsheets. You can put this code into Excel or Word and it works. You can put this latex code just about anywhere you can put text. And it doesn't rely on the, uh, on the HTML interpreter, which means that you can put it where places where HTML would not ordinarily be welcome. So hopefully this was a useful thing for you guys. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully gave you some food for thought. Uh, if you're interested in color coding your module titles, that's the main thing. Modules and elements of modules, assignments and pages. 
it doesn't seem right to me that you can't color code those in. Particularly if you've got younger students, color coding is really important. So what I would say is uh, go to Overleaf or go to, just go to Google and, late, and uh, Google up Latex, L-A-T-E-X. What you will find is a lot of tutorials and a lot of useful tools that will help you format your text and uh, also help you uh, maybe do some things that you didn't think you could do. So hope you guys have a good day today, and I hope all goes well with you. It's Friday. Enjoy the weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great day.